You gotta have the, you gotta enjoy what you're doing. Every day can be Friday. I mean, how many people get up in the morning on Monday and say, oh, here we go again. I never have that. And I, you know, I love what I do. I love meeting with you guys. I like making the phone call. I like making money. I like security. I like freedom. But who does it, right? And I think you got to have that passion, which Vaynerchuk and I think Anthony Robbins show a great deal. We'll get to that in a minute. The three things are you need a strategy, okay? You need marketing, okay? I like social media marketing, but there's many more ways. My way is just the best because it's the cheapest. It doesn't cost me ten. $20,000 a month, okay? And I get quality leads. And the third thing is, you know what I'm gonna say, you've gotta be superb. Not good, not adequate. You've gotta be superb in persuasion, influence, sales. It is the million dollar skill. I don't care if you're selling dental floss or what business you're in. If you don't have the say, I don't care how many leads you have, how many gurus and seminars and books you've read. If you are not superb in sales, you will fail. There, there's my demotivational speech of the day. Okay, so let's just talk quickly about strategies. I like lease purchasing for a simple reason. Um, I, I think you get to control real estate it, you know, rather than let it control you. And if the deal doesn't work out or whatever, you, you've got a contract, but you don't have a lot of money invested in it. You can also have an escape plan out of the deal. You can get out of it. Um, you can make money up front. You can make money every month. You can make money at the end of the deal, like renting a property with the, with the right of purchase. And you can incorporate financing from a motivated seller. You can put this all together in a rental agreement. And I just did a video on this in YouTube. And I said, my mentor used to always say that tenants are smarter than investors. You know, I spent all this money on all these seminars and books and tapes and, and, and everything. And in the end, the tenants were smarter. And in my analysis, because I was a really shitty landlord, uh, the tenants were always manipulating me. Oh, Claude, it's Christmas. We'll pay you February to, you know, next year or something. You know, and I put up with that stuff. Who was, they were in control. The law was on their side. Who had to do the maintenance? Moi. You know, how many people here have got a phone call on Super Bowl Sunday? Hey, fix my toilet. You know, and I was a small business guy just starting out. I couldn't call up contractors and stuff like that. Not all the time. And so you can, the thing about a lease purchase is you can get them motivated. You can get motivated, higher quality tenants. You can make option money up front. You can get paid on time because they're motivated to keep the contract, um, keep the contract alive. Okay. Um, you can get over market rents. You can make a passive income, positive cash flow. My daughter's first three words. You can teach me. Teach. I love you. My daughter said I had positive cash flow. Okay, um, and, you make money, and you can make money at the end of the deal. Hey, you got to Hey, both my kids. You know, I'm the most. I'm the happy. I, I, I'm the happiest boomer parents who has millennial children. They can come back home. They, they're living in their own places. They have their own jobs and careers. I love my children, but they didn't come back. Okay, maybe that's a good. I think that's a good thing. What do you guys think? Because I taught them how to give. Good, I taught them how to be independent, how to give good phone, how to communicate with people. Okay. Does Rebecca does Rebecca still have the uh, record on the uh, Girl Scout cookie sales? Uh, she doesn't sell good Girl Scout cookies anymore, unfortunately. No. She's She's 31 years old and I'm still 36. So I don't know. <laughs> you know. But my daughter was on TV in San Diego. She was the number one Girl Scout in San Diego. She'd go around with her little red rag wagon, really cute. She'd go, do you want one or two cases of each flavor? Where did that kid get that shit from? <laughs> okay. And then she'd do follow-up. She'd send thank you cards to everybody with mom's help, of course. They send a little postal thing. Thank you for buying the cookies and helping me out in the Girl Scouts and everything. Guess who those people remembered next year when she came back? Okay. Mm -hmm. could, you teach a, could you teach an eight, nine, ten-year-old better stuff than that? Okay. Entrepreneurism is the thing we don't teach our kids. We, ha we, we need to start doing that. I, I really believe we need to talk about money on the dinner table once in a while. We need to talk about independence and freedom and the good stuff. Uh, this is n anybody can succeed in this country if they want to hustle. Okay. Off my soapbox. Um, yeah. Everyone is taught to be a, uh, an employee, right, Claude? There's nothing wrong with being it. I have friends who are employees for, and they work for great companies that respect them pay them fairly, uh, treat them well. I'm not anti, uh, for me personally though, I, I'm, a hard, I'm like you, Steve, I'm unemployable, man. 
Um, I love my freedom. I love sitting. I love sitting here in my long underwear. It, it was ten below zero this morning, I think. Uh, actually, it's Under Armour, so I, I still qualify uh, for my dress code. But, <laughs> and and you know, uh, I love the freedom that you get from entrepreneurism. Do do entrepreneurs work harder than someone who works for an employee? I'm a living example of that. 